Kimutase uh, Edi, you said all the right things this afternoon. I think you're going to be a wonderful uh, <laughs> chair today. Saudara uh, Sadai, Salam Sejahtera. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to have been asked to speak about two great men, Tunku Abdul Rahman and my dear friend Pasama. We love and respect them both. One, not just for the man that he was, but for the statesman that he was. The other, not just for the man that he was, that he is, but for the hero that he has become. The Tunku was a true Malaysian. He knew what that meant and he lived by his motto that everyone has a place under the Malaysian sun. Pat Samad is a great patriot and his heart and soul is Malaysian to the core. He sees no difference in people. Tunku always spoke the language of peace and harmony amongst Malaysians. I would like to mention some of his quotable quotes reproduced conveniently by Citizen Nadis in his column uh, in February 2014. We are all Malaysians, quote Tunku. We are all Malaysians. This is the bond that unites us. Let us always remember that unity is our fundamental strength as a people and as a nation. Tunku also said, the main thing which we have to remember is that we have got to make a home of this country and we have got to live happily together ever after. Let us contribute our share towards it, each and every one of us, no matter what may be our race or creed. Let us never allow disunity to divide or disrupt us, for if we do, we fail. Let us always remember that with each passing year, we must ensure that the bonds of unity and goodwill, of tolerance and harmony, grow stronger and stronger. In our multiracial society, our Malaysian democracy, this is all Tunku, eh? in our multiracial society, our Malaysian democracy, nothing is more fundamental than harmony between the many races which form the Malaysian nation. In fact, if I were asked to name one single outstanding quality to explain the success of Malaysia as a free nation, I would without hesitation say it is due to racial understanding and cooperation. Not only does this harmony express the trends of thought and feeling in this country, but it is a treasure of priceless value to each and every one of us. Those are the things that Tunku used to say. Of Pat Sama, I can do no better than to quote from some parts of an article written about him by Amin Iskandar in September 2013. That was the time when Pat Sama was uh, called into the police station at I think it was midnight to give a statement. And I will read what Amin says about him. These are parts of that article. Rambut dan janggutnya yang panjang dan berwarna putih menyebabkan beliau mudah dikenali dan nampak berbeza dari sastrawan-sastrawan lain yang kebiasaannya agak membosankan. Hari ini, Dato' A. Saman Sai merupakan musuh nombor satu negara. Bukan kerana beliau cuba memusnahkan dunia kesusastrawan uh, uh, Melayu akan tetapi kerana keberan, keberanian menyatakan pendirian politik yang bercanggah daripada kerajaan. Umum mengetahui keberanian beliau adalah kerana membenarkan dirinya dipilih menjadi pengerusi bersama gabungan pilihan raya bersih dan adil. Bersih. We were proud to have pasang adil. Terbaru dalam insiden sambutan malam ambang kemerdekaan ke-56 di dataran Merdeka apabila sekumpulan anak-anak muda mengibarkan bendera sang-sang ke Melayu ketika Samad sedang membacakan puisi. Pak Samad diserang dari pelbagai penjuru akibat daripada insiden itu. Beliau yang berumur 78 tahun 
ditahan polis di rumahnya lebih kurang jam 12.30 pagi 4 September dan disoal siasat selama 2 jam sebelum dibebaskan. Dalam kenyataannya kepada media, Pak Samad tidak keberatan sekiranya anugerah sastrawan negara yang beliau terima pada tahun 1985 itu ditarik balik kerajaan. Malahan menurutnya jika mahu meluncurkan kewarganegaraannya juga tidak mengapa. Walaupun beliau kini berhadapan dengan ancaman untuk ditarik kembali anugerah yang beliau perolehi di atas jasa terhadap dunia kesusastraan Melayu, sastrawan negara itu kini mendapat anugerah lebih besar. Beliau kini diangkat sebagai sastrawan rakyat. And I think that describes Pak Samad. Extremely well. He is our sastrawan rakyat. And there we have it. Two people loved by Malaysians of all races and religions. Their beliefs were that of unity, harmony and happiness for the people of Malaysia. For them there was no question about how Malaysia must progress. Only a united Malaysia built on strong principles of democracy and good governance could succeed. I now want to move on to the lessons that we can learn from these two men. The first lesson would be to go back to the basics. We should start with our core documents, the Federal Constitution, the Malaysia Agreement, the Rukun Negara. Let us all first understand them. As a lawyer, the Tunku fully appreciated the process by which the constitution was written. He understood the importance of the separation of powers and an independent judiciary. He knew the institutions must be respected. These were all not mere words. They were vital building blocks for nationhood. Pat Samad also knew this. You read his poems you will see the way in which he speaks about democracy. Somewhere along the way, we have deviated from this path of nationhood and away from the greatness that is within our grasp to something that appears to be bordering on collapse. Today, the country faces many challenges. These challenges have been mounting over the years, but they are a direct result of allowing financial success to override everything else of real value, including our basic constitutional rights and our institutions. Once these became vulnerable, whether to abuse of power or corruption, the destructive path was set. The economy is cause for concern. Our ringgit continues to slide. Oil prices are falling. 1MDB is looking fragile. GST is coming, household debt is rising, and people are really worried. We additionally have the problem of the fabric of society being ripped apart by the few who seek to divide us. The recent floods was the latest in a line of disasters. Look at Cameron Highlands as well. All this caused by the disrespect we have shown to our environment and by uncontrolled corruption. But the calamity on the East Coast saw Malaysians of all walks of life rushing to help the victims. The race or religion of the victims and the volunteers did not matter at all. We had transcended all our differences in a humanitarian crisis. I am reminded of a saying, it is the hour of trial that makes men great, not the hour of triumph. <laughs> This was an hour of trial and it brought out the best in Malaysians. We saw the same goodness come forth with the crises of MH370 and MH17. I remember during the floods, pictures of a minister carrying an old lady who was a flood victim, of the army, police, volunteers and NGOs helping with packing, washing, cleaning, of a secret squad who dropped supplies in remote areas, especially for the Oran Asli who were neglected. 
and of an MP helping to clean and wash floors. These pictures tell us something. They tell us that in a crisis we can rise to the occasion, that we can put aside our differences for the greater good, that in our hour, hour of trial we can be great. I am suggesting that it is time to hit the pause button in Malaysia. Right now, we have to all close ranks and do something. The floods have shown that we have it in us to overcome obstacles. I recall in 2012, um, when Hurricane Sandy was raging in the United States, Obama and Chris Christie, both from different political parties, halted the ongoing campaign for presidential elections and instead worked together to overcome the crisis. In fact, Chris Christie praised Obama for the response. At that moment in time, nothing else mattered to them but the people and the crisis that they faced. They closed ranks when it was crucial to do so. This is our moment in time to close ranks. This is the moment when everyone must pause and consider only the plight of the Raya. This is the moment that is going to count for our future. And we must be inspired by people like the Tunku and Pak Samatsai. They give us hope. What is it I am suggesting? I am suggesting that leaders from the government, opposition and civil society put aside their differences right now and come together in a joint effort to deal immediately with four urgent issues facing the country. I suggest these four issues. One, the flood situation, the indiscriminate deforestation and reconstruction. That's one. Two, the economy and looking realistically at short-term, mid-term and long-term solutions for the people. Three, racial and religious harmony. And four, I'm going to put it in there, the dengue menace. For some reason, we can't seem to get rid of dengue fever. It is a problem. Many people have died. I will call these our immediate concerns. There are more, but we should start with these. I'm not forgetting people, uh, the problems faced by the families of the victims of 370 and 17. The resolution of those issues must be ongoing. However, let's start with these four immediate concerns. In looking at the way forward, I suggest that we start immediately with a few compromises as an act of good faith so that we can all work comfortably together on a common platform. I would suggest that if all the stakeholders are agreeable to this approach, the following commitments be made first as an act of good faith and goodwill. One, there be freedom of the press. Two, there be a moratorium on logging and deforestation. Three, that, an independent, that independent inquiry panels be established in one form or the other to establish how the environmental crises have arisen. Four, that there be a moratorium on amending and implementing legislation that restrict freedom of speech, for example, the Sedition Act, and a moratorium on all charges brought and pending under the same legislation. Five, that there be a moratorium on the implementation of GST. These compromises will immediately inspire the confidence of the Raya in the proposed solution and will enable parties to work more effectively with each other. It will remove the atmosphere of doom and gloom that prevails because people are afraid to speak their mind. We cannot make the people live under this fear anymore. They have enough on their plate as it is. They have a right to live with peace of mind. All these solutions that I have mentioned, actually, why we Lim Kitsyang has already suggested, they're nothing new. I have just pulled together good suggestions made by many people. And why am I saying it here? You must be wondering why I'm not, in heaven's name am I going on about all these things at this forum. 
Well, for me, this forum must be meaningful. For me, this forum must be about bringing the nation back to what the Tunku held dear, to what Pasama holds dear. That's why I am making these suggestions. Let me be clear. I am not making a demand here. I am issuing a plea. A plea to all who are in a position to do so, to consider these suggestions and to implement this proposal by agreement. This means setting up four joint task forces to address each of the immediate concerns. I will call this Project Raya. I say to the government, to the opposition, to the NGOs, that if you will open your minds to this, you will be demonstrating not leadership, but statesmanship. You will be giving people hope. You will lift people out of the melancholy that pervades all conversations about our future. This is how the Tunku would have liked things to progress. I know this is how Pak Sama would like to see Malaysia progress. This is the moment to act. Let this moment turn into a momentum to rebuild and recapture the soul of this nation. The government cannot be expected to do this alone. Let the Rakyat help. Let them be empowered by allowing them to participate. Let us work together. For now, let us give our political differences a rest until the elections. Let us be happy and let our future be secure. If we can do this, we would not just be honouring the Tunku and Pak Saman, but all leaders and ordinary Malaysians who believed and continue to believe in the Malaysian dream. Thank you.